Good evening and welcome everyone to the week 29 of our basic level course in Vedic Astrology by Shiva, Saromangala Institute of Vedic Astrology. So the agenda today, the last week short recap, then today we have seven mistakes students make. This is more based on school students, but it applies to, I think, all of us. And the theme is Tom and Jerry. Then we have the audio check and then the fundamental questions. This is going to be set five now. And after that, coffee with Ravan and the planet is Venus. Then we look at the second part of the content on moon in various powers. This is going to be now 7th to 12th. The characteristics, the key features. Then we have the meeting feedback and then followed by any of your messages and Q&A. And this is the resources link links rather and i want to this time play this video at least once i wanted in this entire course to be played so that everyone is aware of what's available here so i'm going to switch this to the video that is present here Can everyone see this now? Is it visible? Yes. So let me talk about the additional resources that are available for every student here of the Shiva basic level course in Vedic Astrology. The first one is the reference charts. And let me click it here. So this opens up a Google Drive folder and all the things that you see here, for example, Jyotish Shastra and Vedas, Vedas and Scripture Visual Map, Facts on Solar System and Planets. So all these are small, small individual subtopics that have been sliced out from the class plan slides, which were shared in every uh, class. And since they are subdivided into individual topics, you can refer any of them quickly. For example, here are four math tricks to, to remember the houses, Dustana house, and so on. So the other way to make use of this in a uh, good way would be to just open, let's say, the first one. So most of these are single or maximum two or three page pdfs so you can refer these and you can navigate to the next ones using the arrows so it makes it a kind of a revision actually if you want uh, to put it to look at it that way okay so this is about the reference charts and let me go back now this is topics glossary Now I click on this topics glossary, it opens up a Google sheet available in the same folder structure that you have for our class. And you will find a list of topics and also categorized based on like if it's been an, it's an activity or it is purely astrology topic, or if it is related to astronomy, or if it's a, some kind of an explanation, uh, done in the class or a perspective and all the secret seven uh, things that have been covered. So everything is uh, detailed out here from what has been covered in every class. Okay, so this is uh, like the list of topics here. 
here we have the link to the slides which have these topics this is the link to the recording where this was covered this is the week number when it was done and that specific weeks the main topic or theme that is mentioned here okay so the advantage of the this one is that given any topic you can look across the weeks um, uh, or across various classes when that topic was covered and you can look at it for example if i search for let's say for searching you just need to do control and f on your keyboard and supposing i press i type sun so i find there are eight findings here okay so first one is here identification of rising sun and moon sign and then you can navigate down to the next search here so this is also covered here in week five earlier one was week eight then you go down another one week 12 and so on so you can make a very um, uh, useful uh, kind of uh, a tool out of this okay so it will help you a lot when you are trying to understand things okay maybe which have been covered across the uh, classes okay now we'll move to the next next are the secret seven charts and that is self-explanatory so this opens up the google drive folder where every single uh, seven secret seven that has been covered here uh, in our classes are placed as single page pdfs and uh, it goes without saying that these are meant for maintaining our perspective in astrology as well as to serve as an inspiration because there are various um, aspects of life that are covered and here some mapping is done uh, with the astrology learning that we are going to do okay in this class or in this course so this is uh, a good place to refer for that again like before you can open one and keep navigating forward or backward and it's also uh, a nice one when you go go through this on a mobile screen also you can do so it becomes a kind of another uh, revision on perspective in astrology okay now we look at the class guides and guidelines so this opens up a google drive folder which has all the necessary uh, you can say process related documents uh, you can see the uh, class schedule master document which has literally the links to everything else for this course and here you find mission statement objective and then you find the complete 52 week timetable here okay and all other relevant things for example uh, zoom setup or how to upload homework uh, you know and then the, there is a topics glossary placed here okay how to download birth chart all the so the process related class related uh, items are kept here okay the last link on the left side uh, is the student birth charts so if you click here we will see uh, this is again a google drive folder and if you open this pdf here this is a consolidated list of the birth charts of all of our students who had submitted their birth chart here and this is 68 page now many of those who are, who had given this birth chart have left the course but this will serve as a very good uh, reference uh, for us in our astrology study okay so uh, please do make use of this whenever you want to let's say compare or study somebody else having same sign in uh, i mean same planet in the in the same sign and for maybe there is a different combination for that so please do make use of this and within the same folder you will have charts assigned as homework that means all the birth charts which have been actually assigned as homework of so famous personalities or lord krishna and so on okay so please do make use of this 
Now on the right side, you find links where you can provide inputs of feedback. So here, first one is the question box form. And if I click on that, I'm going to get to the form where I can submit my questions. At a time, you can submit three questions, okay? And after you submit, um, I do after in, in a weekly or once in two weeks, I check for any new questions and add them to uh, a Google Sheet, which is placed in the same uh, folder where you have the class content. And also many of them have already been um, answered in that and they are categorized whether they are in the scope of our course or not and so on okay if if you don't know where it is please refer the master document for the link for that for the consolidated list of questions next on the right side we have the suggestion box form and now if i click on this we get a form here where we can give up to maximum three suggestions uh, we have so far uh, not received any suggestion, not a single suggestion has come so far on this, but please do make use of it so that it will be considered and I can also discuss with the faculty if the uh, suggestion needs uh, some consultation. Okay, now we'll move to the next one, which is wishes appreciation box form so i click here you again come to a google form where you can up to three uh, wishes prayers or appreciations uh, for you to document and submit it and i am actually consolidating these as well just like the questions i'm consolidating the suggestions and consolidating these wishes prayers appreciations and keeping in the same google drive folder where you have the class content okay i'll also show it here in the master document um, if you have to find the link to the consolidated list so let me show you here you go to class guides and guidelines and this is the master document now we just come here <clears throat> This is the, these are the links to the forms that I had actually shown just a few seconds back. Now here is where you find the consolidated list of questions, suppositions, suggestions. So as an example, I'll click here. You will see the list of all the questions here, consolidated, categorized by the type of question, whether it is in scope or not, any notes that I have put here and the status of that, okay? So that's about all the links that are available here in the additional resources. Kindly do make use of this. The purpose of this video is to make you aware of what's available here in case you have not yet taken the effort to look into these links, okay? So um, best wishes for uh, a great learning in this course. Okay, I hope that was useful. Now I should go back to our slide. This was the Siva mission. I'll move to the next. Then this is the last week's short recap. So we saw seven quadrilaterals of life, meaning some lessons for everyday life based on quadrilateral shaped objects. And then we saw coffee with Ravan with the qualities of Jupiter being shown and move into Bhavas part one. So we did houses one to six. The links on the bottom right refer to the previous week's recording and the content. Okay, this week's seven, uh, secret seven is seven mistakes students make. 
and i am very sure everyone is aware of this so the first one is misunderstood question so question is itself not understood properly that's the first mistake generally do people do second any guesses for this one accidents accidents okay but how is it related to doing mistakes irresponsible okay careless careless okay okay here i have given it as worked on a data which is not given okay the problem says uh, uh, 21 into something you write it as 20 into something so it's like you are not taken the correct data as given in the question third one is error in our own in the students calculation error in calculating fourth one missing to write something although you have done the calculation correctly but the next step you are not writing part of what you wrote uh, what you found so that's one then forgetting the formula sixth is this i find quite frequent in, in, in many people many students so answering only part of the question forgetting the rest of it okay um uh, then the last one missing to write the units or everything will be fine but you miss to write like the meters or centimeter the units is not written and very often the marks are cut for that okay then how we can relate this to astrology i am trying to explain here now first what it means okay this is like act first think later okay immediately we want to just try to solve without trying to fully understand the question this is i am trying to relate to being selfless in the sense doing even things you know which is not given or something extra or something different so like that this is like one must be good with numbers to avoid error in calculations here don't miss anyone or anything anyone because i want to map it to astrology then this is about having good memory strong moon strong memory answered only partly so you better take care of every part of the question treat all of them fairly then the last one stop fantasizing okay that's why probably the person missed so now coming to uh, mapping to exact astrology thing so i am now having a combination like sign, signs planets as well both together can someone uh, guess what this could be act first think later mesha rashi very good yes aries that's right mesha aries second one any guesses that is also a sign cancer cancer can you please pisces. pisces excellent yes third one what could it be that's a planet is it jupiter so oh. which planet has to do with analysis logic Saturn, Mercury. Mercury, Mercury is Mercury. correct. Yes, Mercury. This one. Don't miss, or rather, don't miss out anyone. This has to do with one sign. cancer which is cancer lagna is about enemy to none friendly to all so that's the reason i put it here this is obvious moon this is related to moon this one be fair justice to all which planet saturn saturn 
Saturn. Yes, absolutely right. So it is Saturn has to do with fairness and justice. This one, the word should itself indicate. Venus. No. Ketu, Ketu. Pant, uh, yeah. Rahu. 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 Yeah. Rahu, that's right. Okay. Excellent. Thanks for participating. Let's move to the audio check. Uh, I've launched it. Seventeen out of twenty. Two people are left. Anything to look at. And similarly for a female. I need to mute everyone. Okay, I got 18 only. I'm stopping here. Share results. Audio is very good. Stop sharing. Okay, so next, we'll go to the next segment here. Three fundamental questions. This is set five. And as I told before, this has to be correct. If you don't have it correct, please ensure to remember it going forward. And I'm going to first launch the poll related to this. Yeah, it should be on your screen now. Before that, I'll read out. The first question is, love and luxury are influenced by, is it moon or Venus? Second, intelligence is influenced by, Mercury or Jupiter. Third, courage is influenced by Sun or Mars. Fifteen out of twenty. Okay, twenty out of twenty responded. And poll. So I am sharing the results. Love and luxury are influenced by one person says moon, 19 say Venus. Intelligence is influenced by 14 by 20, 14 out of 20 say Mercury, 6 say Jupiter. Courage is influenced by 8 say Sun and 12 say Mars. Okay, so thanks for giving the input. Now we'll see the answers here. Number one. Love and luxury, so answer was, it has to be Venus. So I don't know who that one person was. Please note, this is Venus. Second question was intelligence. And here there were some mix. So answer should be Mercury. Third, courage. And here sun is not the main thing, main planet, it is Mars. Mars has to do with courage. Okay. Let's move ahead. So coffee with Ravan. Um, can someone nominate to read the Ravan dialogues and the interviewer dialogues? No one wants to be Ravan. Hmm. 
Mr. Balaji, would you like to speak Ravan Dialogues? Yeah, okay. No problem. <clears throat> interviewer, Ms. Anju, can you speak interviewer at Dialogues? Are you there? Otherwise, Ms. Padma Balaji. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. Then before that, we'll let La Ravan laugh and then we'll start the first question. <laughs> what is marriage about? What would be your response? Mutual misunderstanding. Mutual misunderstanding. Okay. A journey together. Bonded together. Is that what he said? Adjustment. Adjustment. Give and take. Give and take. Okay. So now over to the interviewer. What is marriage about? Hmm. Jo Jita Wei Sikandar. Okay. Why? Power can bring everything, including love, but I am growing skeptical about it being powerless in front of Sita Devi. Second question The most beautiful thing to me, to Ravan, that is Sita. Repeat Sita. Sita. Okay, okay, yeah, Sita. Any, Lust. any other? Lust. Lust. Any other answers? Not himself. Myself, okay, good. Then? What else could be beautiful for Robin? Power. Power, okay. Great answers. Let's see now. Ms. Padma. The most beautiful thing to you. Chandan Se Badan Song, sung by Mukesh. Okay. Really? That is how I could manage without Sita Devi. Okay. Why is comfort important to me? Why is comfort important to Ravan? Because he, uh, he, deserve, he, he deserve for that. Because he loves comfort. Loves comfort. Okay. Because I am 10 heads. I have 10 heads. <laughs> okay. Any because, other? Yeah, he's a king. King, yes, okay, that's by default, yes, then. Okay, let's see the dialogue. Are you comfort important to you? Lankan weather and magic spells. Why, sir? I like nice smelling clothes. Comfort is a good product to use. With every magic, I change to a different costume. And Lankan weather is hot. <laughs> okay, the last question. What gives me the most pleasure? What gives Ravan the most pleasure? Being with Sita Devi. Being with Sita Devi. Okay. Powerful. He is powerful. I am powerful. Okay. Yes. 
Then fulfilling his wish. Fulfilling his wish. Okay. Yes. Being a sadist. Yeah. Kavita ji was saying something. To trouble devas. <laughs> okay. Let's see this dialogue. What gives you the most pleasure? Winning in every eating and spell be contest. How, sir? Ten mouths, my dear friend. Okay, so you see, this was about Venus. Venus has to do with marriage, comforts, pleasure, beauty, everything that's related to reproduction uh, function for humans. So that was Venus. I think we should then move to the main content today. It is 7.30 now. Okay, now we'll go to the other PDF, which is Moon in various houses or bhavas, and that is going to be from seven to twelve today. Share screen. Yeah. If one of you can volunteer to read, please. No, I will read Moon in Seventh House Bhava. The seventh represents the person opposite, not opposing to you. How you interact, how you deal, etc. Can be your spouse, partner, boss, client, customer, etc. Spouse is equal to Chandramukhi, fond of overseas travel, creative in terms of design, artistic, business and loves forming partnership. The person becomes a diplomat in this house. Yeah, and um, I think before we discuss or go further, can someone say what all things does Moon represent? Mother. Yes. Mind. 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 Emotion. Mind. Emotion. Emotion. Yes. Excellent. So that's the main thing here. And if we have the analogy of Dr. Bala, Lagna is the chassis of our car, the structure of the car. Moon is the driver and engine is the sun Sorry. or the battery is the sun. So this is a critical uh, for every birth chart, moon. And it has to do with the uh, mind and emotion. And <clears throat> in this case, seventh house, so we know it, it's for the, um, the, the, the part represents the partner or the person we are um, interacting with at the same level, including the spouse. So here, that's why we find the um, representing moon also represents, um, uh, also represents beauty apart from Venus. So here, that's why the spouse is said to be beautiful. And moon also has to do with water. And that's why here, that's the water thing comes here. Fond of overseas travel, creative in design. So creativity also comes. And here it is, comes towards this business, mainly around this, something to do where you have this uh, partnership with somebody, there the creativity comes in. And person becomes a diplomat in this house. So since you're using a your mind a lot there, so that's the reason this is uh, mapped here. Venkat, I have a question if I may ask. Yes. So sorry, this is a little basic maybe. Um, uh, and maybe you've covered it in other places. But these particular characteristics, uh, they are mm. supposed to be something that extend through one's life. Is that correct? Or for the major, major part of one's life or, or what? And not only yeah. for moon, I'm just talking generally. Yeah, in general, yes. Yeah. Which may or may not show in the outside. Yeah. Personality. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Anything specific on that? No, I'm just wondering, you know, because people do change to some extent, right? 
So at, at some point, for example, if you're fond of overseas travel at a certain point, and then you completely lose interest and say, to hell with it, you know, I don't want, want to go anywhere. So, so I wonder yeah, what be. accounts for I mean, yeah. So the, every, all of these also depend on our stage of life. Yeah. There will be, the person might reach a point where travel has no, no meaning. At age 90, then there's no meaning. So uh, that can change. Yes. But the thing is, this person, certainly the, somebody having moon in seventh house is likely to have these kind of things uh, at some point in life, at least. Okay. If not throughout, it is, doesn't mean that it's going to be throughout the life, but this characteristics will be present in the person at some point. Yeah. Almost. Okay, thank you. Almost. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. It's not true that in a younger age, everybody is interested to go to overseas travel. Generally. Yeah. yeah. I think not everyone is interested, yes, for overseas. Maybe because we are a third world country, so to in quotes. So uh, I don't know, but but at least um, in India, it seems like that, yeah, to travel overseas. This this is true in the UK also. I've, I've met a lot of guys. Mm. A couple of you know, a couple of decades ago, they also interested to travel to uh, yeah. third world country and to find out what's happening. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but those are like the, this travel mentioned. This slide is not like vacation travel. This is like sort of uh, something with a purpose and long term something like that. Yeah. Okay, okay, hmm. okay. Uh, let's move to eighth house. Yeah. Somebody else can read, please. May I read? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. You're on mute. Uh, uh, okay, uh, uh, may I take it, please? Yeah. yeah. The eight represents the core, core vitality, transformation, house mysteries, and longevity. Birth, infancy, generally critical. Balarishtha. Tough delivery for mother, away from mother, difficult childhood, depression and psychosis in a person, accidents and sudden events. Generally bad news. Hmm. Yeah. So eight um, usually has to do with something suddenly happening. Okay. And since moon is mind, there is connection with something bad happening with the mind, like you see here in depression, psychosis. And also 8,000 is about, it doesn't need to be always negative, something like a transformation. Person can undergo a major transformation. And it is also a spiritual house because eighth comes as a moksha house. Uh, and also things like, which are mystery, hidden, occult, those things are also character of eighth house. Okay. And Moon being the mother and eighth being Dustana that you find there, tough delivery for mother. So, uh, I don't, oh, actually, I, we forgot to check that. Uh, anyone has moon in seventh house? Let's go back to that. Uh, me. Uh, I have moon in seventh uh, Dr. house. Dr. Umavati, okay. Yes. How far does it match for you? You are already overseas, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about that the person becomes a diplomat in this house. That one I'm not very clear. But the rest are correct, I think. Okay, yeah. Maybe can you give some example how the creative aspect is there? Uh, yeah, so I, 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 I'm in the education side and I have to design a lot of uh, uh, learning mm. in a very creative manner. So I don't need to teach that to lecturers. Uh, okay. I, I'm also thinking about <laughs> actually having a business partnership at this point of time in my life. Okay. So oh. I think that's correct. And yes, I do travel a lot for work. I mean, before the pandemic, uh, I was traveling a lot for work. Uh, yes, the spouse is here. The spouse is good looking, is it? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. And then, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm just not very sure about the last one. Is it, does it mean that I'm a bossy person? Is it? No, no, no. Diplomat is uh, like, you know, being able to the handle... The peacemaker? The peacemaker? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah. I think so. Yeah, that, then that's true. Yes. Mm. 
thank you okay. so much <laughs> means having a way with words managing different you know conflicts and all yes that happens <laughs> yes then it's true okay. then yes nice anyone else moon in seventh no okay i was actually trying to clean up that birth chart thing but didn't have enough time to, so i'm not seeing that okay let's go to moon in eight anyone has moon in eight we got my wife okay do you think that matches here no but i really don't know okay and nothing you know nothing of this sort you know i have ever come came across okay is she away from her mother definitely yes mm. okay. but uh, it's not, not for the complete life you know she's been of course you know women get wedding and she has to go away from them yeah yeah uh, so that part is of course there so and the birth infancy difficult childhood i really don't know okay the depression psychosis no uh mm. the accidents and sudden events also i don't see much but i don't know how to relate uh, the sudden events with hmm so sudden events could be like um let's say you're doing fashion designing and then you find that you are doing something yeah, totally that's different that's right that's right that's right that is it that's right okay. so she was into different uh, uh, you know study stream all together and then uh, there was okay. yeah and then of course uh, uh, maybe you know a sudden events like you know changing cities changing place yeah yeah correct that career is what well, it doesn't need to be career related only yeah any any yeah. sudden yeah correct yeah correct so uh, that that was there yes okay. so oh, so I, so venkat again a basic question if you don't mind so yeah. you know if if uh, whatever the lagna is at a particular moment um, and if the moon happens to be in the 8th house of that uh, that and this is again i'm generalizing does mm-hmm. it actually follow that pretty much everyone born at the very same time uh, mm-hmm. is likely to face all these i mean i can hardly imagine you know maternity ward everyone's having difficult uh, deliveries at that time at exactly the t- same time i mean as an i mean obviously i'm exaggerating but you know what i mean so mm-hmm. how is is Uh, what i mean i i find this a little um, i don't know extreme i'm not sure what to say but it okay. seems to be that like everyone is at that point is who will be who is born at that time with it is all all of them are going to have the same kind of rough issues 70 60% of them is it true mm, we have to check the research data with dr bala for that okay uh, but what i'm sure is whatever he puts here is based on actual evidence okay i'm sure so i'm sure we should check this with him so i had get your point you mean to say if if you have a specific hospital and there are deliveries happening at the same time then everyone should have tough delivery that's what you mean something like that yeah <laughs> but i'm not sure how many will be delivered at the same time maybe uh, i don't know we'll check yeah with dr bala okay uh, so uh yeah accidents and sudden events uh, they are during the childhood itself or the later stages yeah there's nothing specific any time any point in life any point in time in life okay yeah when exactly real time things will be seen more in the uh, mahadasha period and transits planetary transits those so there are other ways to look at that yeah but from this this is like the position at the time of the birth so we can not come to any specific specifics based on that yeah let's move to ninth uh, i don't uh, nobody else has right eighth house i mean moon in eighth uh, my daughter has that's the reason i asked okay yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah tough delivery was there that is there okay uh, right okay good maybe mekla you mekla miss mekla you can read this yeah uh eighth house aisha stana scorpio corresponds to the eighth house indicates natural desire for occult science hidden research detecting abilities 
This house is also moksha sthana and other words, transformation of self, searching the truth, inquisitive in various fields. Yeah, this is about the house aspect. Considering the Kalapusha in mind, where Aries is one. Usually in analysis, we also consider that. Okay, when you say, although the eighth house need not be Scorpio, but that Scorpio based on Kalapusha is also considered for, you know, during analysis there's some uh, influence is there like that okay i mean we can only talk in general terms right now but that thing is uh, also taken into account that's what i want to say kalapursha is taken into account okay now what happens is although eighth is dustana dustana meaning things might not be for good but if you have some good or well-placed uh, benefits, then that ill effects are said to get cancelled. Uh, example, you have Jupiter here in this eighth house or Jupiter is in Lagna. Those things can cancel out those ill effects that are normally interpreted based only on the moon in uh, eighth house. Okay. So uh, eighth house, as you already know, then if there is a well-placed benefits, then the finding is different. You have something like the person is very unique personality, always searching for something new, good intuition, inclination towards medicine, and ability to detect very well, good Sherlock Holmes qualities. So that's what is, happens when you uh, Dustana is cancelled by good benefits. The benefits can be placed in any house, not in the same house as the moon. No, it depends. Same as what I'm sure of is this eighth house itself or in the Lagna. For example, Jupiter in Lagna usually cancels almost all ill effects generally found. Okay. 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 But and the then, other things will depend, aspects, depending on the aspects. And, and, if, and if Jupiter is, in the, is along with the moon in the eighth house, then? Uh, your voice was low. Uh, yeah, if uh, if Jupiter is in the eighth house along with the moon, then yeah, then also it, it's a benefic planet, so it get cancelled. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's go to ninth. Let's hope we can do till twelfth. Yeah. Someone can read, please. Yeah, <clears throat> I will read. Moon in ninth house. The ninth represents the fortune, philosophy, higher education, religion, ethics, culture, traditions, and father. Religious and highly philosophical, good teacher, good academic status in a teaching institution. Glorious from all sectors, constantly traveling, fortunate in life, be the bright future, successful in business. Yeah. So here, uh, whatever qualities are represented by that house, the moon is enhancing. You can remember that nine is among 159, which is Lakshmi house, auspicious house. So generally, good, good things will happen. Uh, so means those which are aligned to what the house is representing. So that's why you find almost parallel match to what the house represents here in terms to, towards the positive side. So good uh, you know, highly uh, religious, philosophical, towards oriented towards higher education, traveling and fortune, because ninth has to do with fortune. So fortunate in life, bright future and so on. Anyone has moon in ninth? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so in general, you'll find that trend. So that's why you should remember those numbers like one, four, seven, ten, Kendra houses, then your one, five, nine is uh, this Lakshmi houses. One, four, seven, ten is also known as Vishnu house. Then Tustana houses, three, six, eight, twelve. So those things you'll find similar pattern for these planets according to those numbers. Moon in 10th house. 10th house is a carrier house. Someone can read, please. Shall I read? Yeah. The 10th represents a poor image in professional life, house of career, 
and what world sees, or sees you. Regal and majestic personality, celebrity and star in this her world. Uh, the deeds will be remembered in all the four corners of the world. Dramatic ups and downs in career. Yeah. Anyone has Moon in 10th? Yes, I have. You have. Same here. Okay. Even I have. Yeah. Okay. So maybe Ms. Sarasija, you can say first. Okay. Um, I, I really don't know, but uh, this dramatic ups and downs in career is, uh, I think, is true. The others, I don't really don't know. Okay. Not sure. Not sure. So here, actually, some of these things, uh, for example, celebrity it doesn't mean that we are like in the, the big celebrity in the world. It does means what it means is maybe celebrity within your circle, within your family, like that. That's what it means. Um, okay, uh, Ms. Rekha, how far does it match for you? It matches quite. Hmm. Fact, except for the last one, I don't know what the dramatic ups and downs in career is. Mm. I, but, you had right you were in a normal corporate job and then you totally shift shifted it was only once not many times yeah yeah i mean they, doesn't yeah, mean that, that perspective but, yes yeah. and mm. in fact uh, my husband also has moon in the 10th house so okay. both of us actually then all of this match 100 uh, percent okay yeah this actually is said because the nature of moon is, you know, fifty uh, percent it's uh, waxing, then fifty percent waning. That's the reason. This is connected to that, where you have ups and downs. It's not like a steady thing. Uh, that's been observed. Yeah. Let's move to eleventh moon in eleventh. Somebody can read. Yeah, uh, I have moon in eleventh. Yeah. In the eleventh represents the house of fulfillment of desires, profit, gains, and cash flow. The native native is very idealistic in nature, fond of water and sea, is useful to powerful personalities, highly knowledgeable, holding key positions in an organization, will never be in a financial crunch. Yeah. Anyone has? I have eleven. Well, you said yeah, yeah. yeah. How much does it match? Uh, almost at um, uh, almost. I don't. I'm not fond of water or sea. Uh, rest everything is almost in line. Okay. I don't know about highly knowledgeable. <laughs> That's the other, other person to judge. <laughs> but are you in a key position? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a self-employed person. I was oh. in a key position, but now I'm a self-employed. Okay, good. Okay, anyone else having moon in 11th? Okay, then let's... So my sister has this. So my Your sister has this. I did everything, but we know we want to do both. Yes, and my son also, but he's too young for this. Yeah. Um, yeah, for my sister, she never had any key positions in any organization. Financial okay. current, okay, no issues, but is useful to the powerful personalities, I don't know. I don't understand mm. this. Mm. You know, is she useful for the powerful personalities? Is that it does mean? Mm, yeah, even I'm not sure. I'll note this down. I don't remember what this is about. is useful okay moon in 11th fine thank you i'll check this then with dr bala or faculty yeah anyone else with moon in 11th Okay, let's go to 12th. 12th, you know, again, it's one of the Dustana houses. Someone can read, please. Could I read? Yeah. The 12th represents the house of liberation, detachment, displacement, and expenditure. 
always worried person inability to reach his goals and ambitions as his high desires are disproportionate to his capacity expenditure is usually more than his earning one gives a lot of strain to the eyes with the left eye being more vulnerable yeah anyone has moon in 12th i have sir mekla okay mekla yeah does it match match uh, the last one strain is with the right eye more not the left okay not the left and uh, the expenditure is not more than earning okay otherwise okay are you worried usually yes usually yes okay what about the second one the second yeah. one maybe okay. sir i am not okay. very sure okay yeah mr ravi yeah for me uh, you know always worried person i really don't know um, maybe yes there is or two worries which always you know hmm yeah so that thing is because the the moon has to do with emotions Over, so and so 12th has to do with so the inability to reach goals and ambition hmm so your your audio is coming off and on i don't know how it is for others uh just a minute i'll just switch it just a second just... yeah so i was telling moon is about yeah, this hello winger can you hear me ah uh, yeah yes yes Wink. go ahead yeah, uh, you were telling about the second point yeah the second point inability to reach goals and ambitions yes of course there are few goals of course hmm. you know none i think none of us can reach all our goals yeah few of them but it's not that you know, none of the goal is reached is not that case yeah you know okay. high is high desires are disproportionate pro but this uh, proportionate to his capacity expenditure is usually more than his earning is not the right answer for me uh, the fact is that my jupiter is also in the 12th house so you know maybe yeah yeah that can cancel out yeah correct so that's why i, I don't see much of a similarities here yeah yeah i think there is a next slide to talk about that i think yeah okay yeah maybe miss ravi you can read this yeah so it's uh, 12th house is uh, vyasthana So Pisces corresponds to the twelfth house from Kala Purusha, the highest sign of Moksha Sthana, house of liberation, salvation, and contentment. So Vya is means that expenditure can be of money, energy, or intellect. Yeah, it can be any. Need not be or finance. All right. Okay. okay. This also. Ah, uh, so the moon uh, in the twelfth house is well placed when if it cancels Zusana. The twelfth represents the house of liberation, detachment, displacement, and expenditure. So this position gives birth to very talented writers, healers, and spiritual personalities. Okay, permanent settlement into foreign lands, far from home, and usually a person crosses a sea since moon represents water. So okay for me, yeah, there is a desire to get settled abroad, but it has not yet happened. Mm. So I am away from my home. That's right. And mm. away from home means my motherland, my mother place, my yeah. native place. Yeah. So the you know talented writer, I have not ever tried it. Healers, uh, really don't know. And spiritual personalities, of course, yes. Mm. So okay. usually a person crosses a sea since moons represent. I have crossed seas for many times for my work. Okay, that's correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Anyone else having moon in twelfth? Uh, I have not gone away from my mother land at all, or native Never place to, for that matter. <laughs> no, but do you have Jupiter as well in twelfth? No. 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 Uh, it is the sun which is there. Ah, okay. No, this is sun is not really a benefit. So here, yeah. uh, um, you find Mr. Ravi had Jupiter also has Jupiter also. That's why. So this slide is about those uh, having benefits which ca- cancels the dustana related. I mean the right. Uh, okay. Yeah. The these the other findings. Yeah. Okay. Only other places 
only the houses in which the benefits are present or uh, the slide is applicable yeah for the dustana houses which uh, yeah, okay. are the 3 well, yeah so that is the jupiter in the lagna or in the same house only jupiter or any other yeah, planet yeah. yeah so we have other benefits are jupiter venus okay so uh, but we should not uh, you know <laughs> write it down like jupiter in first jupiter in this that means this is it but we'll have to see other planets also something might be different okay so uh, so there is yeah. a bit of a twist, Venkat, that I also have a Saturn. So let's start yeah. With Jupiter. <laughs> that's what... yeah, so that's again. So it's going to, you know, it's not, it's malefic. Yeah, so yeah, correct. Saturn, yeah. Jupiter, and uh, Moon in the 12th yeah. hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. So that, that's what we are going to study. So we are trying to get more and more aware and adding slightly more and more things as we go across the weeks. Uh, then till we reach a point when we can discuss the actually discuss such cases, then that that is when we can understand better. Yeah. Okay, that was nice. So let's move on. I think already eight o'clock, and I have another class to take. Okay, I'll just um, share this poll. Meeting feedback. Yep. Yeah, launched it. Eighteen out of nineteen done. One person is left. We we'll still give few seconds for that person who's pending. Okay. I think I'll have to end here. 18 out of 19. And the results are on your screen. Meeting pace is fine, 100%. I feel I learned something to 100%. In practical activity is engaging, 100%. Topics in general, all easy, say 8 out of 18. Partially hard, rest easy, say 10 out of 18. Meeting, um, so audio is fine. Okay, I'll stop it here. And let's move to this one. Any Anything anyone wants to say about or anything they learned today's class? Okay, this is a useful slide. Maybe we'll discuss later on this. Then any other questions if you have? Else, we'll close it today. Uh, about the uh, this one, Grihamitra and Drikbala, Venkat. When yeah. are we doing that? We'll do after the all house oh, planets are covered powers. for the houses. Yeah, okay. yeah. Because as and when we are learning, because of those things also, it's a bit confusing now. Yeah, yeah. It the will, effects it's of them. Yeah. yeah. We'll dedicate a class for that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay, then thanks for joining today. This Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, Venkatji. Thank you, Venkat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Venkat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Venkat. Thank you. Bye. Okay.